Ladies and gentlemen, we all win when one wins. We all win. When we work together, we all win. Thank you and God bless you. Um, I, I'm inclined to give one minute to Bob Ferguson to respond to the congressman and then an additional minute to respond again. Oh, I, I don't mind that he went over his time. It's no problem. Thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for your time today. My opponent does not support that law, and I do support that law. We have a big transition to a clean energy economy. I support that, he does not, and that's important for issues related to climate. I'll also add that I'm proud to be the only can endorsed by environmental organizations who care deeply about this issue. Sierra Club. Everyone in this room, and as I speak uh, to people across the state, it doesn't matter what group I talk to, um, I ask them, hey, how many in here want to make sure our water is clean for our children? Every hand goes up. How many want to make sure that our air is clean? Easy way to raise the money I need to run a campaign. But I do it because we now have 100,000 Washingtonians who have donated to my campaign. It's a massive grassroots army all across the state. Done centering your voices and decisions we make. And as governor, I'll make sure you have a seat at the table. Uh, we offered Bob Ferguson a pack check but he wouldn't take it. But what he told us to do was to give it to the Democrat state party and then they would forward the check to him. That's dishonest, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what's happened to our government. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to another Black K Creative Creation. Ajako blog matsai already my le hajrar lai first part or second part Asian Pacific Highlander collection ko first or second part dekhe sahi chu. Yuse mo third part dekhano koi rahe chu. Ye third part matsai hajrar le alikiti poila ga onda kare le parak dekhno hone cha. Is matsai governor hall ko Washington governor hall ko debate. Bhaiko Bisma Udarko plan and management uh Kosari Gumara Chalone Yakarkako debates a year no nesa one Malasa Lyza Azurli Yopni Mon Paradinonsa Bhane Ajaka Ajo and Algarigo Mon Paradin Vosa Yupuni Mon Paradinonza and Asraikutsu Ra Azurla Mon Parima Azurli uh Apno Common Aru uh common box ma Kiki creative creation, you will send a commerce from a common box. Ma, so no one had the gondor garde as a go block. Suru Ganaway, Postola Sierra Dinola. Choices that you made in your life, and the choices that your mother and father, your aunts and uncles, your cousins made in your life, teachers and bosses, fellow employees making decisions together about your life. You are probably somewhere in your life where you never thought you would be. I am running as governor of Washington State growing up in the Renton Highlands in an 800 square foot home with nine people. And here I am today asking you to vote for me as governor. You know my career. After leaving uh, Renton Highlands, I graduated from Kent Meridian High School and I went on to be the first elected sheriff in 30 years in King County, the largest sheriff's office in the state of Washington, 12th largest across the country. That's my number one priority is the criminal justice system. I went on to Congress and I worked in Congress as a trade chairman, the tax chairman, the human resources chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. My number two priority is the economy. Well, actually, they're combined together, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later also. Economy, crime, homelessness, education. So I named actually four, and I don't see those being separated at all. They're actually intertwined together. 
when we pull on one strand, we affect the economy, we, we affect the criminal justice system. I'm happy to be with you here today. I appreciate your kind attention, and I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was a little better, audience, but I'm going to ask staff and organizers to kind of monitor the back of that room because there's still a lot of people talking back there, and it's really disrespectful. Uh, we can hear you up here, so don't pretend you're not talking. Okay? Thank you very much for those comments, gentlemen. Our first question, and we will start with Congressman Reichert this time. According to the Office of Financial Management, Washington State is home to over 800,000 Asian Americans, over 70,000 Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. Many of these members make use of important social services and government programs to take care of themselves and their families. As governor, how would you enhance or create programs important to the AA and HPI community especially when it comes to jobs, pay equity, and affordable housing. Congressman Riker. That question, thank you again for, for being here. Um, so I, as the Sheriff of King County, I had the opportunity to work with quite a diverse group of people in, in King County as the 12th largest Sheriff's Office in the country. And in fact, made sure that we hired people that represented our diverse community in the Sheriff's Office. One of the things that I am proud of um, as working in the Sheriff's Office was hiring, I don't know if you knew this or not, but um, back during the W2O era, hired 25 officers from Honolulu who wanted to move to Washington State. We were proud to have them as a part of the King County Sheriff's Office. We had a very diverse command staff, um, also picking the, and choosing the best people and also those that represented our community I am really interested, though, in talking to each and every one of you, because I think we need to have a government that's inclusive, where we can talk to each other about the rising costs of homes and what's causing those rising costs. Number one is the gas prices here in Washington State that we pay increases the price of everything that we buy. The, the zoning laws in this state need to be changed so that you can build buildings easier easier. Those permitting laws need to be streamlined in Washington State so you can get a permit to build or add on to your building. Those regulations that are so burdensome on businesses, small businesses across this state, need to be revamped. We also need to take a look at not only the rezoning, the revamping of, of uh, permitting, but we also have to make sure that we can provide uh, some tax incentives so that we can build low-income uh, housing for those of uh, those people who are homeless who have a job can't afford a home those are the things that we need to do to work together and what I look forward to doing is just sitting down with all of you and coming up with a solution uh, to the problems that we face here not only in the economy but across the state as we look at the rest of the problems that we have mentioned earlier thank you for your attention very much, very good rap. <laughs> Mr. Ferguson, same question. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the question mentioning the importance of social services. Before I got into politics, I actually spent a year directing and running an emergency service office, working in a diverse community and helping folks out with a whole range of social services. And that's an important to make sure as a state we're investing in that. What's also important, I think that gets to the issues in your question, is making sure we're getting the voices of all Washingtonians and diverse communities in making our decisions. Let me give you an example of that. As Attorney General, I realize we as a state have all these task forces that the legislature and the governor ask Washingtonians to serve on. Those task forces are important. They give guidance to the legislature who makes big policy that impacts your lives. Well, guess what? Who's got time to take an entire day off from work to go serve on the task force? You're busy, you've got jobs, only a small slice of our population can do that. I propose legislation that said we compensate people who serve on those task forces. So you can take some time away from your job or away from other obligations and serve on that task force and influence that policy. We're bringing more voices to the table and that's important. And I've done that as your attorney general. 
For I was Attorney General, if you called our office with a civil rights complaint, and you know the attacks on Asian Americans have only gone up in recent years. We've seen that in the Seattle Times article that was published just this week. I created a civil rights division in my office named after Ling Lu, first Asian American elected to political office in the Pacific Northwest. That civil rights division advocates in this for room, and as I speak uh, to people across the state, it doesn't matter what group I talk to, um, I ask them, hey, how many in here want to make sure our water is clean for our children? Every hand goes up. How many want to make sure that our air is clean for our children and our grandchildren? I have six great-grandchildren, well, five great-grandchildren, and one on the way, thank you. How many want to make sure that our forests are protected? And how many want to make sure that our wildlife is protected, our salmon um, runs are protected? We all do. We want to make sure that Washington State stays clean, green, and pristine. But we can't <laughs> set arbitrary dates to make this happen. We have to transition into uh, the future clean energy fuel of the future. And we have some energy right now being developed, small modular nuclear, for example, is a clean energy resource for us that we could use. I am a person who wants to look at all of the above energy as we transition into the new technology of tomorrow to make sure that we have a clean, green, pristine Washington state. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ferguson. Thank you. So there's a pretty big contrast on this issue. So I appreciate, Congressman, what you said about clean, green, and pristine, but guess what? As elected officials, we have to make important decisions. And there's a big issue right now before our state related to climate specifically. There's a law that requires big corporations that pollute our environment to pay, pay hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And the state's using that money to go to exactly your question, to address, to address the climate crisis and create good paying jobs all across the state for those projects. There's just one problem. My opponent does not support that law, and I do support that law. We have a big transition to a clean energy economy. I support that, he does not. And that's important for issues related to climate. I'll also add that I'm proud to be the only can endorsed by environmental organizations who care deeply about this issue. Sierra Club, Washington Conservation Action. They endorsed me because they know this is the priority for me and my term as governor. And I've demonstrated that as your attorney general. I created an environmental enforcement division in my office. So if there is polluters out there, guess what? My team holds them accountable, makes them pay hundreds of millions of dollars that the state can now use to keep Washington State clean, green, and pristine. But that requires leadership, not just talk. It requires actual leadership, holding entities accountable, making sure we're defending laws that keep our environment helpful for all Washingtonians. One more thing I'll say. 30 seconds. One more thing I just will add in my last 30 seconds is that law also provides for what's called a working families tax credit. That's dollars back in the pockets for hundreds of thousands of Washingtonians. I support that. We'll increase the amount of the funds going to that working families tax credit to help Washingtonians who are struggling with this economy. State, the state should be making sure we're putting dollars back in your pockets when folks are struggling. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you will now have two minutes for a closing statement. In that closing statement, it would be wonderful if you will include how you would work to build relationships and further engage the AANHPI community, uh, but it's your choice. Uh, two minutes, and I will give you a 30-second cue as well. We will start with Bob Ferguson. Thank you so much, and thanks again for, for moderating to all of you as well. I appreciate the chance to chat with each and every one of you and all the work we've done together in my 12 years as Attorney General. It's a great question to end on, right? How to make sure that we're working together on the challenges we're facing. And a governor has broad powers, and where I see the partnership really extending as governor, as a couple examples, is a few. Number one, a governor proposes a budget. It's a huge document that impacts our lives. I'll make sure as a governor that I'm working with you and this community and communities all across the state to make sure it's a budget that prioritizes you. I said at the beginning, I'm the only candidate who does not accept any political donations from large corporations or corporate PACs. That's not the easy way to raise the money I need to run a campaign. 
but I do it because we now have 100,000 Washingtonians who have donated to my campaign. It's a massive grassroots army all across the state to them centering your voices and decisions we make. And as governor, I'll make sure you have a seat at the table for critical decisions the state's making. As an example, the governor often makes appointments to boards and commissions that make huge decisions on our lives. I'll make sure you have a seat at the table to make sure your voice is heard for those important boards and commissions. And that extends to other areas as well, our judicial system. Governor Inslee, I believe, has made literally a couple hundred appointments to our judiciary. Vacancies have come up and the governor makes the appointment of what judge rules on cases of all range of issues facing our state. I'll make seconds. sure we have a bench, judges, who reflect the broad diversity of our state. Lastly, thank you. Lastly, uh, I should mention I've been married to my wife, Colleen, for many years. She's an educator. She works at a community college. We're proud parents of 16-year-old twins, uh, Jack and Katie. Uh, it's an honor to be here and see so many familiar faces and look forward to working with you as your next governor. Thank you very much. And Congressman Riker. It's two minutes, right? Yes. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised because I was told this was going to be a forum, uh, not a debate. My opponent has mentioned my name at least two or three times and told some fibs. So I want to address just a couple of those, uh, sadly. Um, first of all, uh, my opponent has accepted PAC money. And I know that because one of the PAC folks who visited with him first came to my office and said, we offered Bob Ferguson a PAC check, but he wouldn't take it. But what he told us to do was to give it to the Democrat state party, and then they would forward the check to him. That's dishonest, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what's happened to our government over the past 12 years. We have been not, we have not been, we've been deceived. We know that the gas tax did not cost us pennies. They cost us 50 cents a gallon. And every time we pay that gas tax, diapers go up, bread goes up, milk goes up, cost goes higher and higher. We have got to put the pause button on that gas tax. We can protect the environment at the same time. Now I'll tell you, I want to be your governor, and I'm going to seconds. be honest with you, and we are going to work together. We're going to make this a partnership where you and I sit down together. Let me share a quick story for you. You might remember this. There was a Special Olympian training hard for his event. He got up to the starting line. The starting gun went off. He ran a few steps, tripped and fell. The rest of the people in the race stopped and you know what they did they turned around they came back and they picked that special friend up and they arm in arm walked across the finish line ladies and gentlemen we all win when one wins we all win when we work together we all win thank you and god bless you Um, I, I'm inclined to give one minute to Bob Ferguson to respond to the congressman and then an additional minute to respond again. Well, I, I don't mind that he went over his time. It's no problem. Thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for your time today. That concludes our candidates forum for today. We'd like to thank both gentlemen for making time to visit with us at our event. And we'd like to thank the audience for being very attentive. Thank you very much. And I apologize, the noise initially, the, the audience noise was were our interpreters interpreting what was going on with their um, constituents. So. Uh, I think they kind of managed to do their interpreting, but in a lower volume. So thank you very much for cooperating. It allowed all of us to, to hear better. Thank you. Again, uh, election day is November 5th.
you will receive your ballots in the mail if you are registered about two weeks before the election. If you haven't already registered, you can do so online or by mail by October 28th. You can go up to any table here that has a voter registration sign and someone can help you get registered here. If you are not eligible to vote in this election, you can still stay engaged in Ajaku Asian Pacific uh, Highlander Collections uh, Epics uh, Washington uh, Democratic Summit ko last part one third part my le Ajurar Lai Dehai Ajurar Laki Kosto Lagyu Apno Omulia Sola Sujavaru Chonuna Androd Gade आज अगर ब्लॉग वाले बिदा चांचू सी यू ऑन नेक्स्ट ब्लॉग बाय फॉर नाउ बाय बाय बाय